My most used office supplies are memo pads and post-it notes. They're easy to use as scrap paper for ideas and quick notes to remember. How can we design a scrap pad that's efficient to use and results in less waste? Today, we'll be designing and making a dry erase memo pad, starting with a rough sketch of the product. The idea was to keep the memo pad at an angle so that the writing surface can be seen when it was on a desk. The overall size of the product would be 6 inches by 8 inches, which is comparable to the size of a small sketchbook. Underneath the surface would be a simple finger joint frame that holds the writing surface at an angle. There would be a shelf that could store dry erase marker pens or used as a handle to hold up the memo pad when we're moving around. When the sketch was complete, I set up my laptop and load up Rhinoceros to draw the final design. I start by drawing the overall size of the memo pad, which is 6 inches by 8 inches. I draw a 1 inch diameter circle at the corners, trim off the lines to get a smooth curve, and mirror it to all of the corners of the rectangle. Using the trim command again, I remove all the 90 degree corners and use the join command to combine all the lines into a single shape. The next step was drawing the triangular frames that will hold the writing surface at an angle. I started with a 30 degree angle to help me decide if it was the right slope. I also decided to curve the acute angle corner at the bottom of the triangle so it wouldn't be sharp enough to scratch the surface of the desk. With the overall frame designed, it was time to include finger joints which will tab into the backer board of the memo pad. I drew these at a half inch width and spaced them two inches from the corners. To create the slots in the backer board, I copied the lines with the finger joints and rotated it so the joints ran in the correct direction on the frame. Using the move command, I aligned it on the backer board and moved the joints to their location. Using the polyline command, I drew the slots and deleted the guide that I copied. Moving on to the writing surface, I decided to create a half inch border around it. To do this, I copied the perimeter of the backer board and used the offset command, set it to half of an inch, and went inward of the shape. I created a copy of the interior rectangle, which will be the cutout for the glossy black acrylic surface. One step that's part of my design process is creating a 3D model of the project to see how it would look before I make it out of the actual material. To do that, I extrude all of the shapes at 1 8 of an inch and use both the move and rotate commands to get them in place. During this process, there's always something that I notice with the design that I know I could make better. For this project, I realized that the 30 degree angle for the writing surface was too steep. I decided to reduce it to 15 degrees. I also decided to design a small open shelf at an angle to hold marker pens at the back of the memo pad. Next, I extrude the shapes and repeat the same process of rotating and moving each piece into place. I switched the viewport to rendered so we can see the wood and black surface finish and decided to go with the updated lower slope design. With the design complete, I gather my materials that consists of 8th inch walnut plywood from Glowforge. 3mm glossy black acrylic, and Maxi Cure Super Glue. I turn on my Glowforge, open the cover, and insert the walnut plywood to start the cutting process. Using Glowforge's online app, I import my design file, move it to a location that would save some parts of the material for future projects, and start the laser cutting process. As simple as this design might seem, it takes a lot of brainstorming, sketching, designing, and refining to get any project to this point. The practice of creating something from concept through to a final product is important for developing your skills as a designer and creator. It's important to continue learning, be open to mistakes or happy accidents, and share your work along the way. Have fun with the process and just enjoy the time you spend creating each product. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge, I'll share a link in the description of this video that'll give you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. After organizing the pieces on my table, I carefully removed the paper masking tape from the surfaces of the walnut plywood. The proof grade materials from my Glowforge come with the wood pre-finished with a semi-gloss finish, and this paper masking tape already applied and tightly adhered onto the surface of the wood. This protects the wood from scorches and burns from the laser cutting process.
Using my Maxi Cure Super Glue, I apply a thin line of it along the sides of the finger joints and the edge of the surface that would join with the surface of the triangular frames. I align the finger joint with the slot of one triangular frame and join the two together. I repeat this process with the other triangular frame. Turning the frame upright, I apply the glue onto the edge of the slope side of the triangular frames where it'll join with the bottom surface of the backer board. I take the backer board, align the slots with the finger joints, and carefully press each side of the surface until the finger joints go through the slots. With the frame setup complete, I apply the MaxiCure glue onto the surface of the wood border, align it with the backer board, and join them together. Moving on to the glossy black acrylic, I carefully remove the protective paper coating from one side of the acrylic and leave the paper coating on the opposite side. Using my Maxi Cure glue, I apply three drops of it along each edge and one at the center of the exposed acrylic. I align the acrylic with the wood border and press it into place to join it with the backer board. I remove the paper coating from the remaining side of the black acrylic and get ready to test the dry erase memo pad. Before writing anything on the memo pad, I look at the finished product and admire the simplicity of the design. I also love how the dark walnut wood works well aesthetically with the black acrylic. To test this product, I used a chalk marker with bright colors that I bought on Amazon. If you want to be environmentally conscious, there are other brands out there who make refillable, eco-friendly dry erase markers that come in white. Using the orange colored dry erase marker, I draw a jack-o'-lantern and label the drawing with a white colored marker. I test the erasing qualities of the marker on the black acrylic by erasing the sketch and notes. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love this playlist that I created of all my popular laser cut wood projects. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again next week.